How's it going? Going. You ever been inside an RV before? Uh, probably like twice, I think. What happened? Uh, when were you inside an RV? I think my dad or something, he had one of those. And I was like, what the fuck are you doing with this shit? <laughs> I was like, all right. And that was years ago. That was, that was like 13 or something. Did you guys go anywhere sick? No, I was just in there. <laughs> just chilling? Just chilling. Definitely. So this is a green screen right here so we can put the image of any road you want. Like, where's, oh, okay. where, where, where do we want to be right now? It could be anywhere. Oh, it looked like in Paris or something. <laughs> the road in Paris? Yeah. All right, Nate, can you pull up the Paris road real quick? All right, so. All right, cool. So we're in Paris now. Uh, <laughs> can't go there or so. something. You can't go to Paris? I don't think I can. <laughs> How come? Oh, I think I'm a felon. <laughs> you were supposed to serve a a life sentence. Yeah, life. Yeah. Crazy. That's, that's crazy. That shit just happened just magically, mysteriously, out of nowhere. How? When did you first go into jail for this charge? Oh, good lucky. Um, January six, twenty eighteen. So it's been a long time. Yeah, it's been a long, it's been a minute. When you first went in, were you like anticipating that you'd be able to get out one day or you just like thought that you were in there forever? Yeah, but I just didn't think it was going to be like how, how it was like this, just randomly just, oh, you get a deal now, now you can go home. Like I thought it was going to be like much harder, cause especially all the shit they was doing to me. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? What happened to you? Just, you know, refiling the same charges, filing penal codes that <laughs> they don't use like against people. Having me go to trial, that was like supposed to be like my third trial because I my second trial was in, when the coronavirus first hit, so I had a mistrial. Mm -hmm. So this was going to be my third trial. I just didn't think. And then my first trial was like almost nine weeks or something. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go through this again. And then they're probably going to try to do some bullshit. I didn't think it was going to happen or that gas cone was going to win. I didn't think none of that shit was going to happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm here, so. What's it like being free after all this time? Like, what was the first thing that you did when you hopped out of a, out of jail? I went to go get my jewelry, and then I went to the studio. I went to go see my son, but I went to the studio. Yep, studio. The chorus songs. Regular shit. I didn't think it was going to be like this. Like, I thought it would have been, like, more love from people. Apparently, they feel like I'm going to take their spot. So, a lot of people been, like, hating on me and shit. That sucks, man. Yeah, but it's whatever. I'm used to it. They hated on Jesus. So. They did hate on Jesus. A lot of people did. Exactly. <laughs> what are they saying about you? Nothing. They just like, I don't know, everybody just taking shots at me, shit like that. Like, they want some attention, clout, mm -hmm. shit like that. You think they'd be like happy for you, right? Since you were yeah. just down for so long. Fighting the death penalty. I, I would have thought people would have been happy. You're like, fighting the death penalty? Yep. For, death for, penalty. for what was that charge for? Uh, I had like five attempted murders, murder, conspiracy. Uh, murder, conspiracy, attempted murder, and then the gang charge that carry life by itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some crazy wild shit. Do you feel like you were targeted by LAPD? LAPD, sheriffs, the district attorney, everybody. <laughs> yeah. So is it over now, or you still have stuff to like work? I mean, through? I got probation and shit like that, but yeah, I'm gonna say it's over, but I don't think it's over. Uh, I don't. Mm -hmm. I know they're mad about it, but it just is nothing like. It's nothing really they can really do right now. Like, especially it's a different DA in the office. Like, it's mm -hmm. not too much they can really do right now. Unless I get in trouble again, then that's when they can try to come in. But nah, I know they're watching me though. For sure. For sure. So, mm -hmm. what's up with the new DA? They're just like more lenient about charges. Something I guess like that? he's supposed to be like, you know, like that. I mean, he's still a prosecutor, but I heard he's supposed to be like, like the type of shit, the gang shit, like how they abuse that and, you know, police. And I guess he's supposed to be better with that. Mm -hmm. What was it like being locked up when all this stuff happened, like the protests and coronavirus? <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. I was still trying to get used to this mass shit. Like, uh, it wasn't none of that before I came to jail. Mm -hmm. Coronavirus, all this wearing a mask everywhere you go. And man, they act like that shit is like, I mean, I, I know it's serious, but they act like that shit is like. I don't know. That shit crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Was there people in jail getting getting COVID during? The yeah, time? and I and nothing happened to me. Like, what do you mean? Like literally nothing. They like, 
I don't understand the shit where it's just like there's no cure to it, but it's like, oh yeah, like you just quarantine for two weeks and it goes away. Like mm-hmm. it was people that all they do in jail is somebody catch they just fucking quarantine the whole tier and then in two weeks they just take it off quarantine and magically nobody has it no more. Like, mm-hmm. This shit is weird. So you never, you were like never worried about getting in it when you're inside. Nah, I mean, I was in a cell by myself. So you were in solitary confinement. Yeah. Oh man, for how long? First time I was like eighteen months. Then I went back again. So I don't know, probably like almost two years. Right. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, like almost two years. How does that affect you? Uh, I don't know. It's like I don't know. Fuck with your head, like just everything that's just going on because. Mm-hmm. I don't know, just, I get it though. I guess they probably did that shit to try to fuck me up like, and make me like be not the same. Like, I don't know, just in case if this do happen and I got out, which like how it is right now. I don't know, I still gotta try to get used to things right now, but I don't know, it's, I don't know, it's a lot. I can't even explain that shit. Like, I mean, do you feel like it worked? Like, do you feel different after your time in solitary? Oh yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. I feel different. Just being around all those type of people, like it's different type of individuals down there. Like, it's not like regular people. Like, it's like, it's different. Mm-hmm. It's not like being in general population. Everything is serious. Like, everything is, it's everything. <laughs> I don't know. For sure. So, in, when you're in solitary, like, do you have any privileges? Do you get to go outside? Do you get to go to the yeah, yard? You get to go outside, go to the yard, in a cage, though, mm-hmm. for three hours. You get day room once, twi- once a week. So, it's day room yard for three hours. Mm-hmm. But it's not like, I don't know. You're only interacting with the people that's down there. So where I was at, it was only six people. And that was only if they could get like attorney calls, like to call their lawyer and shit. Because where I was at, they took my phone pictures. No phone, no visits, no nothing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. You don't really get to interact with people like that. And it's only the same people that's right there. So after a while, you get tired of like being around the same people. You want to leave, but you can't. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. For sure. So what do you do to occupy time and like, you know? Read books, work out. For sure. Read magazines, shit like that. You read a bunch of books in there? Yeah, a bunch of books. <laughs> Did you read before jail? No. What the fuck? Damn. Hell no. Nah. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. So what'd you read in jail? It was Napoleon Hill, like other shit, 4A Law of Power, shit that, I don't know, Art of War, regular shit. Some pretty powerful books. Yeah. Some pretty powerful reading. Powerful shit, but yeah, like in jail, that was like regular shit, like. Read that type of shit all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So whenever you went to jail, being a, a famous rapper, were you like a celebrity? Oh yeah, for sure. Everyone knew I was the police. Everybody. Mm-hmm. So did they try to put you in protective custody? Nah. <laughs> I mean, they asked you that, but it's like, nah, I ain't doing that. <laughs> I read online that uh, Soldier Boy was trying to to, <laughs> to bully you in jail. <laughs> Hell no. <nah. laughs> he was in a PC module. Yeah. Right. What was it like seeing Soldier Boy in jail? I mean, it was cool. I just didn't. Yeah, I didn't really like. I don't know. He's straightening on that. I just don't like the fact he be trying to call himself Draco. And shit. It's just like, uh, oh shit. Yeah. Uh, How'd you come up with the name Draco? Is that like a Harry Potter reference? <laughs> no, nah, I got it from that uh, little Greek lawmaker, Draconian law. Yeah, that's where I got it from. Though. Have you seen Harry Potter before? Not really. I seen the books and shit, but I never like was into that shit. Like, nah. There's this character in Harry Potter named Draco Malfoy. Oh, and that's he, crazy. He's like the big villain of the entire series. Oh, that's crazy. He's from the House of Slytherin. You yeah, know, that's crazy. they're kind of like the, they're like the snake house. So they're like the evil dark arts house of Harry Potter. Maybe I and, need to look into that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know it's a star, a dragon, a person. I didn't know it was another person. That's yeah, crazy. for sure. His his full name is Draco Malfoy. I have to look that up. <laughs> Draco Malfoy. So what does it mean to be a uh, flu flaming? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just make shit up, bro. I can't explain it though. And I don't, uh, it's crazy. Nah. <laughs> but if you ask the detective or people at my court, they said I'm, it means to rob Asians and go to Neiman Marcus. Uh, to rob Asians? Yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what my detective said. I never said that. But the detective thinks the song Flu Flaming is about robbing yeah, Asian Yeah, robbing people. Asians and going to Neiman Market, spending the money up there, like, so, <laughs> and buying things. That's that's what my detective would tell you, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I take it you didn't make a song about robbing Asians. No, nope, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. Nah. For sure. So I heard you wrote over 200 songs in jail. 209. Have you recorded all those yet? I recorded like 20 of them. 
Mm-hmm. I just been so busy. Like, uh, I've been doing like interviews, like shit like this, like mm-hmm. recording videos, trying to make sure I have many videos as possible. Just because I'm scared of going back to jail again and something like that happening. And I, like, it was just, I don't know. Because when I went to jail the first time, like I was recording videos and shit every day, but I didn't have enough videos. I didn't have enough music. So I just think like, just to record as much, do whatever as much I can possible, just in case, you know, these people just, something weird happens. For sure. Have you found a place to live yet? No, been looking. Uh, so that's a, another thing too. I'm tired of staying in these fucking hotels and shit. Like, it's not, I'm tired of this shit. Cost two guys that much money. I didn't think it was going to be like this. And then you got all this bullshit ass EDD and all that shit. They didn't fucked everything up. Everything is expensive now. Mm-hmm. Like, it wasn't like that before I came to jail. Mm-hmm. Everything is just so, it's a different world now. I mean, just from the a criminal justice perspective, it must have been crazy for you, like maintaining your innocence this whole time. Yeah. Them trying to tell you that you were guilty for so long. <laughs> Telling me I was guilty and then, like, I was found not guilty. And then I still had to plead to something, which would make it technically like I'm guilty in their eyes because they got the conviction. It's just too much going on. Mm-hmm. But. I'm from the streets, so I was like, after all this, uh, I could have waited though. I could have waited, but I didn't. Mm. What's up? What's Pippi Longstock? <laughs> uh, I guess that's like an extension. It's like Shanae or something. It's extendo, extension, whatever shit like that. Is that what you use to rob agents? No, hell no. Nah. <laughs> Who do, do some shit like that? I can't do that. Mm. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so what does your dream house look like if you can get out of these hotels imagine you could have any place to live like what does it look like ooh I uh, I would have to have like it gotta be like a two three story house I gotta have mm, basketball court tennis court all that regular shit mm, baseball field yeah maybe that too yeah. basketball like I gotta have like a gym in that motherfucker though like movie theater Mm. I need like a like a pharmacist or something in there too. They could be they make all the lean for me. I need like a little thing in there. They could be in the back making shit. Uh, like an in house pharmacist. Yeah. Like you want a laboratory. Yeah, I need a laboratory. Yeah, I need that they can make like in your basement, like yeah. Dexter. Yeah, but they just make lean for you. Yeah, just make lean. That's it. They can make lean. They can find somebody to bring activists back. They can mm. be in there. Can can you still find activists if you try hard enough? Some. Yeah, but it's really, really expensive. Like, and How much for a line? Woo! <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, man, a lot. Because I don't even know. Because when I got out, like, walk hard and shit like that was like 60 a line. And now that's just like 300, 400. So back then, active was like 250 a line. So I would assume that that shit is probably like 2,000, 2,500, some shit like that. It's going to be really hard to find that. <laughs> so four ounces would be $1,000. Or Ooh. no, $10,000. Yeah, yeah, Damn. probably that much, yeah. But if you get your own Dexter in the basement. It's free. You can just get it for free. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Well, if you could live anywhere, would you live in LA? No. Where would you live? Somewhere. I mean, all, all this shit is technically going to be still LA, but somewhere farther out. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't want to say where I would live because then people would be like, oh, let's look, that's what we're going to look from here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What about the city of Lancaster? Oh, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? Hell no, that's like living in the ghetto. What about the city of Victorville? No, that's the same thing. The fuck? How about Hemet, California? No, that's the same thing. <laughs> Desert Hot Springs? I don't even know where that's at. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nah, all that shit is the same. I don't want to live nowhere where they got low income shit. I don't want to live nowhere where they nothing, nobody, be mm-hmm. by nobody that I could see that was in the hood and they just like, uh, nah, that's all. No deserts. Uh, no deserts? Nah, uh uh-uh. I can't do it. What's the connection between the desert and the hood? I don't know. I don't, for some reason, like, it's nothing out there. So I don't, I guess they just like, people from the hood just want to go out there. Like, oh, the houses are cheap. But then it's like, yeah, you coming out here and there's nothing out here. The malls are trash. Like, what? Yeah. Nah. I was but driving it, through South Central and I saw a bunch of advertisements for houses in Lancaster and Palmdale. And it was yeah, like, they want in mo- today. Yeah, they want to move everybody out. So, you know, they can <laughs> move all the people out the hood and then change it around. You know. Do you know families that have just gone straight to the desert? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, that's what they do anyway. Like when it was tearing down like projects and shit, they give everybody, oh, here, here you go. Housing Lancasters. Like, yeah, now is that going to make it better? Because now you just moved everybody from the projects to Lancaster and y'all live around each other, a corner from each other. Mm-hmm. Half you motherfuckers beef with each other. Now people are getting shot and shit. It's like living in the hood again, just mm-hmm. in a bigger house, I guess. As far as the projects being torn down, did that happen in your lifetime? Yeah, yeah, they. I guess they like tearing the Jordan Downs down, but they're still there though. But they've been moving shit around. Like I've been new about the Lancaster. They always move people to Lancaster, Victorville, shit like that. Mm-hmm. Fucking the Riverside. They always move places. Like it's that. terrible like, out there. Yeah, like yeah. It's not, what part of LA did you grow up in? In South Central. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I I grew up by like Washington High School. Mm-hmm. I went there too. When did you start making music? Seriously, like 2015. Oh damn! So yeah. you were like an adult. Yeah, yeah, I was like 19, 21, 21. What were you doing before that? <laughs> uh, getting money. <laughs> getting money. Getting money. Spending money at Neiman Marcus. Yeah, pretty much. Some Asian money. Nah, nah, <laughs> yeah, nah. Uh, <laughs> uh, nah, nah. Was there a moment where you're like, I want to start rapping? Was there someone who was like, damn, you're good at this? <laughs> Now my brother and them used to just tell me like, oh yeah, like you good, you should start doing this, but I'm I'm not seeing no money from this. Like, they're like, man, you know, just do this. You got talent, man. You're different. I'm like, nigga, I, I'm not different. Everybody rides about the same shit. Like everybody, but I guess my shit was different. Like, I don't know, just the way I worry things and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Do you think you would have gone to jail if you were if you weren't famous for as long as you did? Like, do you think nah. you were targeted because you're like a yeah, celebrity? Yeah, the way I was, they were trying to take my career away from me. Mm-hmm. I know what it was, I know what was going on. Like, uh, I seen it like just the way they was treating me. I was like a trophy for them. Like, and with me being like in and out of jail and shit like that, then it was easier for them to try to be like, oh yeah, he's not this. He just says he's a rapper. He, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, Why do you think they target up and coming rappers? Because they they don't want them to succeed. They they feel like. I really don't know what they think of it from my perspective. It's just like they just want to take something from us. They like, oh yeah, they wanna, they wanna, they wanna fuck with you. They wanna be like, cause nobody wants to be the nigga that almost made it. So with them, they just they feel like we don't deserve it. They feel mm-hmm. like they work hard and you know have you know these jobs and went to school and all this shit, and we could just go in there and 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 spit something on a record and make more than they can make in a lifetime. Mm-hmm. But they don't know the shit that we had to go through that this is our ticket out, out of the ghetto. And, you know, they feel like like we don't deserve it. Like, why should it be, it should be, should it be that easy? But it's not that easy, though. It's not. Like, look at all the shit I went through. Like, come on, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, But you would think it's that easy. Like, they think it's that easy, but it's not. It's a lot that comes with this shit. No one changes overnight anyway. I guess they feel, too, like most you know, rappers, like, I'm not gonna say they involve a crime, but they grew up in the hood, poverty and shit like that. So they feel like, you know, fuck them. Like they're they're criminals. They don't deserve to get this money. Like, but I don't know. They ain't just bitches too. So I don't know. They're they're bitches. Mm-hmm. For sure. Mm. Haters. Mm. Bitches. Keep going. Whatever else they want to be. <laughs> like, <laughs> whatever else. Like you feel me? Like there's no reason. Like. But then to do like some like some people like are generally like they might just be yeah they might just be fuck ups criminals whatever like mm-hmm. but if somebody is trying to find a way to to make it out of that and you trying to stop them from doing this like out of jealousy and envy that's not like what you signed up to be a police officer for you signed up to stop the rapists and all these other people like from doing shit not to prevent rappers from you know getting their families out the hood and shit like that like I don't know mm-hmm. do you feel like I mean you said kind of the reason that you were targeted is because you're famous and because you're like a, you know, a celebrity where you came from, and yeah. I guess everywhere, you know, knowing that you were going to go to jail for so long, I guess, would you have ever made music in the first place? Are you happy that you're here? I'm happy I'm here. I mean, I don't regret nothing. I don't take nothing back because, you know, now I got a story. I got a story to tell now. Mm-hmm. And like, like, it's easy to, it's cool to make it rapping, like, but that shit only... It only goes so far. When you got a story, though, then it's different. Because it's like, okay, people are interested. They want to know what's mm-hmm. going on. They want to know what you've been through. Then it, it kind of relates to the music, too, because now they can feel like they can relate to it or 
You know, yeah. people that might not have liked you might like you. They like, you know what? He didn't been through all this. Like, I'm gonna give it a chance, man. Yeah. Like, shit like that. So they tacked on all these charges: attempted murder, conspiracy to attempt murder. Man. Just they're just saying that you're trying to do a bunch of a uh, bunch of bad things. Basically, but like, all attempts. Like, you never did anything. But yeah, they're, they're not saying even saying trying. I did nothing though. Like, they're just saying you're thinking about doing a lot of stuff. Yeah, and because of my music, like. Yeah, I had the intent to do all this stuff. And was there a particular lyric that they were like, "Okay, that's the"? You know. Yeah, they said I had RJ the rapper tied up in the back of the trunk or something, mm-hmm. which wasn't true because he wasn't in the back of the trunk. So it's just kind of weird, like. Mm-hmm. But it's like when you're a rapper and you come out the hood and whatever, it's kind of racist. It's like how these police officers and DAs work because it's like, oh, well, if you say it in a rap, then it's true. Mm-hmm. But if you perform it in a movie or something, then it's not real. Like, like I don't understand, like. They're like, well, he said this, and look at his record, and look at the videos. Mm-hmm. Like, that still doesn't make it <laughs> Is that real. Your impression of the DA. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. like he's this person, and if you look at his record, he's been yeah. this, and look at the video where he says this, and mm-hmm. like, then it's like it's kind of easier for you to believe it. Like, oh well, shit, he does have a record. He did have a gun in a video. That still doesn't make yeah. what you're saying true. Like, there's people that do that shit all the time, but mm-hmm. I guess when it's like people of color or people like I'm gonna say color because. Most of the rap game is like blacks, yeah. whatever. Like, so when it when it's when it's us, then it's like, fuck it, yeah, I believe that shit. Like, hell yeah, yeah. hell yeah, you did it. Like, it's like, right? They just assume you're guilty because of yeah. how you look. Is there is there a way of restructuring the uh, the justice system? You think where it, it where it won't be like that? I mean, like, how do you see a future where this wouldn't happen to someone like you? Maybe ten years down the line, that was in your shoes a couple years ago. I mean, maybe they change police and shit like that. Like, train them different. I don't fucking know. Like. Cause I'm not all like I don't know like I don't I don't like getting into politics and shit like that. Like, mm-hmm. I already know they watching me. Like I don't, I don't like getting into that shit, but it, I don't know. Maybe they figured out. I mean, Gascon's supposed to change all this, so I guess that's why they elected him in there. Maybe they'll change it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So, what's jail like out here in California? Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> it's the worst county jail to be in. Everyone knows that. Mm-hmm. It's like it's terrible. It's bad. What makes it so bad? Because, I mean, it's bad if you're from out of town. That, that's mm-hmm. what makes it worse. Like, because then you get done bad. Like, it's like you don't have no help. You don't have no. Mm-hmm. Then it's like, it's bad too if you're not a gang member. It's bad. Like, it's bad just basically if you can't hold your own. If you're a person that can't hold your own, then it's 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 not a good look. Like, it's food is terrible. Like, everything is bad. Like, I saw on YouTube it said that when you go to jail, you're supposed to um, just punch the biggest guy that you see. <laughs> nah, yo, nah, don't do that. <laughs> nah, it's not like that. Hell no. Nah. You just gotta, you can't let nobody like, at the end of the day, it's not like how, how people make it seem to like, like, yeah, people are in there fighting and doing shit, but like, it's not just like people just going out, just, oh yeah, you're, I'm just gonna take your shit just because, like, nah, like, if they see weakness in you though, they will. Mm-hmm. They'll thrive on that. They'll tear you apart. But, it's people like, it's not about the biggest dude. It's about being a real nigga. It's about who you is. It's people that's five one that run fucking jail modules because they're fucking killers and they just don't give a fuck. Like, then you got big motherfuckers that's six fucking five as bitches. Like, I don't know. It's all about just being a real person and like, if you're being a man, really. But if you're that, you can hold your own and you'll make it. What do you think would happen to me if I went to went to jail? I don't know, man, because you, uh, you were, it's politics, so you were run white. I don't know how, I, I know how they run, but it's just, uh, I don't know. Y'all got it. Y'all numbers are short. <laughs> it's not even <laughs> funny. Like, uh, so I don't know. Like, Would I have to join like a, some kind of like skinhead gang? Nah. I mean, you got woods, you got skinheads, you got, it's, it's a difference. So you would just, I guess you would just be a wood because you're white. Like, do you get, and then you got people that's like skinheads and all the other shit, like, that's racist and whatever. What's what's a wood? Just regular. You just like a wood. You oh, white. It's short for pecker wood. Yeah, you just white. Oh. And then you got the separate people that's like all within y'all. But then it's I don't know, because y'all numbers are always short, bro. Like so mm-hmm. it's like y'all would just have to worry about like race riots and shit like that. That's mm-hmm. where it'd be bad. Like other than that though, y'all don't really have nothing to worry about. Like mm-hmm. nothing like that. Was there any like race riots when you were in there? Nah. Yeah. Nah. I mean, especially now where I was at in solitary confinement because you're in a cell by yourself and you get popped mm-hmm. out by yourself to go to the shower and all that shit like that. So, mm-hmm. 
Nah. Did hey, you ever see me. anybody with a mask before you came out? Yeah, I had a mask. Yeah. <laughs> I had a couple masks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but nah, I ain't shit like that. Yeah, it seems like all that time in solitary would like would probably make you go crazy. Yeah. Do you start hallucinating or having like? Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> you can see and shit that's, that is not there. I don't know, like shadows, shit like that. I don't know, it's fucking with your head, but nigga don't see no extra people or no shit like that. And, uh, nah, if you see shadows a lot of times, then it's just so dark down there. So I don't know. At what point into solitary did that start to affect you? Everything was cool to like my 10th month. Like 10th month and then, I don't know. No. She started going left. I had to keep it to myself. I had to tell nobody like, nah, I gotta, I gotta go tell nobody this. But yeah, the room started getting smaller. Like she started fucking, fucking with you. Like it's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's weird. How big was the room? Like five by seven. I think the regular show is like six by six. So mm-hmm. I like a little bigger than this table. This, the bunk is like small because the man hangs out the bunk. Mm-hmm. So you got to sleep outside with it. So you felt the walls start to close in? Yeah, pretty much. I never knew what that saying meant. I, I know now though. It's crazy. What does that feel like? I mean, it was, it was I don't know. I can't explain. It was crazy though. That's why you have to keep reading books and shit like that. Work out, keep your mind right, keep you from going crazy. Because that's what they want. They want you to go crazy. They want you to, you know, lose yourself and, and give in. And that's when you get to come in, taking a bullshit ass deal. And you're like, no, what? I don't want to take my chances. They get, they try to get your mind first. Mm-hmm. So, but if you can keep a steady mind and just keep your head straight, work out, keep your mind off of things, then shit would be cool. Mm-hmm. So, whenever you were in there, was there a particular book that you thought was like the most? That you would reread or something like that? Oh yeah, I went the devil, Napoleon. Yeah. What's that? What's that book about? Like basically just, uh, how do I explain it? I don't know because he predicted predicted a lot of shit that that was happening. It's basically, like just I don't know. How can I explain it? Like basically, it's just how like I guess like the how they try to say like the how people. Like with the devil and all that, like he was basically just saying, like it's in your mind, like that, that, like the devil, the devil could be anything, basically, and they like he preys on the weak. So once they get your mind, like I was just talking about, mm-hmm. then that's that's when they got you. Like they prey on people, they use the media, whatever shit like that to, like, what is it called, propaganda, shit yeah. like that. Because most people are scared of, you know, fear, death, poverty, which is shit that's going on right now. Mm-hmm. Shit like that. So uh, basically just letting you know, like, the only way that, you know, the devil is going to be around is unless he lives off fear. Shit like that. Like, and he only, he only, um, it's only the weak minded people. I forgot what it says in the book, though. It's a name for it, the drifters. So anybody that can drift, he can get a hold of. If you're not a drifter, then he can't get you. Most of these people are drifters out here. Like they just, uh, no, but I don't want to keep talking about that. You can keep talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, when you when you describe a drifter, is that somebody who doesn't kind of focus their intentions? They can't think just... for themselves. Like, like they're easily influenced. Like, mm-hmm. they just, it's like, oh, people tell you something. It's like, oh, yeah, well, this person said it. Like, they can't think their own mind. They can't mm-hmm. decide, like, Oh well, this person said this, but maybe I should do my own research. Maybe I should think about if that's true or not. Like they just, they're easily influenced. Like mm-hmm. basically, for you, how do you feel like you avoided falling into that trap? Are you just built that way? Yeah, because I mean, I always think for myself. I always, I don't just take people's word for things. Like I don't. I just grew up that way. Like, and, and I grew up around, and like my whole life, I grew up around just being in jail and just like around people that lie all day and just like you you just deal with so many people it's like hard to trust people and hard to like do stuff so I was just like I, I always think for myself 
I'll never let nobody run my program or dictate what I have going. This motherfucker just rocking. <laughs> I thought I was tripping for a minute. <laughs> crazy. What, the RV? Yeah, I was like, yeah. this motherfucker rocking back and forth. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's, pre- it's pretty flimsy. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Whenever you left solitary confinement, can you describe that feeling of just like, kind of reentering a place where you can be around people and have normal conversations and friends? It just feel weird because like, you know, you want to sell by yourself for all that time. So you get so used to being in the cell by yourself, you don't realize like, like, damn, what type of weird shit do I do in the cell by myself? Because there's never no one watching you. You always in the cell by yourself. So I always thought like, am I not, am I going to like be a weirdo? Like when I get out, like, am I go, like, do I do things that like, I don't notice I do in the cell by myself. And then when I get around people, they like, is this motherfucker talking to himself? Like, what the fuck is going on? Like, because you, it's so small, so all you have to do is look around. Like, just look around all day. So I used to tell my cousin and shit when I got out and I was in the cell with him. I was just like, like, do I be doing weird shit, bro? Like, like I'm so used to being in my cell. I'm like, I don't want to be in my cell. Just And then I'm in the cell with y'all and I'm just looking around and shit. And y'all, and y'all just come out and they were like, what the fuck are you looking at, bro? I'm so used to being in a small cell. There's nothing to do but look at the fucking wall all day. Like, like I was just thinking like, you know, I don't want to be a fucking weirdo. Like, you know. Well, you don't seem weird. Yeah. I was just trying to get used to this shit. Like, and you know, that shit like, that shit like, I know you develop like, probably like OCD shit like that. Like, it's just, mm-hmm. cell so small. Like, no matter how many times you keep cleaning the motherfucker, you always feel like it's something that you need to clean. It's like, no matter what, it's never going to be as clean as you want it to be because shit ain't be dropping on the floor. Or do you get to keep cleaning this shit? Like, it's just certain shit. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's just crazy. Do you yeah. feel like it still affects you to this day, all that time you spent in there? Yeah, for sure. Because I, I always think every day. I mean, it kind of helps me, though, because every day I think, like, I never want to go back to jail. Like, I never want to go through this again. Mm-hmm. So anytime I, like, drift off and and think about, like, Doing something out of potentially make me go to jail. I always think like that's not where I want to go. Like, that's not where I want to be. I can't. Even, I, so I'm, I've been up for two day, two weeks straight. I haven't been able to sleep because every day I've been thinking like, man, damn, I'm really out. Damn, I can't go back to jail. I can't do this. I have to do this for this person. I have to do this. I have to make sure that I'm in a position where I never could ever get in trouble or or whatever because. I'm everybody ticket out, basically. Like, I'm everybody's ticket out the ghetto. Like, they let everybody else out. They let my brother, everybody else out before me. They had me going through all this. And I know why, because they feel like, you know, I'm the head person. I'm this. They're going to fall without me. Like, so I, it kind of helped me, though. It just reminded me that it's not where I want to be because being in the worst place in LA County Jail is like, it's not like being on the main line. Most people, that's why people come to jail and, it's like you on the main line, you're having fun, you're doing bullshit. But when you're in a place like that, it's like people don't know about places like that. So it's like mm-hmm. it kind of help you. Like, I never want to go to that place again. Like, that type of shit. You haven't slept in two weeks? No. Like, not even 15 minutes, not a little nap? Uh, that was off, but I ended up waking up. I'd be so fucking busy. Like, yeah. I was trying to go to sleep earlier. I've been up. I probably went to sleep for like two hours or something, but I'm up again. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you think that is? I don't know. My head fucked up. I got anxiety. I just... I need to fucking... Like, I don't know. Like, mm-hmm. But like I said, it's helping me, though, because if I wouldn't be up, I wouldn't have time to fucking, like, you know, be ready or prepared to do all the shit that I have to do. I'll be lollygagging. Like, I, mm-hmm. oh, I can do that another day. I can do it another day. I have to do everything that I need to do. Well, how'd you deal with anxiety before your experience in solitary? Should I just get high? <laughs> like, I mean, I never really had anxiety. Like, I never really had no anxiety. Like, I never really even thought. I never thought places like that fucking exist. So, like, it wasn't really nothing. Like, I don't know. Like, I never really thought nothing of it. I didn't give a fuck. No anxiety. I was like, anxiety, anxiety. What the fuck? I don't. So your anxiety is based upon maybe doing something that's gonna pretty much bring yeah, you back to that small pretty room, pretty much, or getting into a situation, or having to get into a situation, or getting blamed for something that I have no involvement in, or 
You know, people trying to rob me, shit like that, to where right. I black out in the street, come back, like, I don't want to be street no more. Like, that shit didn't get a nigga nowhere. Mm-hmm. It's always going to be in me, but I don't want to, like, I don't want to do that shit no more. H- how do you resist those temptations? Just stay away from people. Mm-hmm. Don't come back to the hood. I don't. I don't do any of that shit. You still get high? No, I can't. Oh, <laughs> uh, you get drug tested? <laughs> no, I don't get drug tested. I just feel like I, I shit it. I mean, unless I just got a prescription medication and I get it from the doctor or something. But other than that, like, no, just get high, just get high. I can't even play like that anyway because people, people want to get me. You know, people are out to get me. Police, regular people. So I can't even be slipping like that to where somebody catching me. Like, you got a lot of people like, Slipping or shit just happened to him, and I need to be on my toes at all times. Are you nervous right now? I'm always nervous. <laughs> like, I don't know. I take my life seriously. So, mm-hmm. and knowing that I had, like, I had, like, you know, first I was just worried about the streets, like, streets, like, okay, you know, I don't want to be like this rapper to get killed. I don't want to be like this. I don't want this to happen to me. Like, now I have to worry about the police also. So, it's two separate things to be worried about. It's a lot to deal with. Talk about my responsibilities. I got a son, shit like that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> like a lot of people talk about, you know, whenever they get out of jail. I've never, obviously, never been. Yeah. But when you get out, like everything feels like, like you don't really know what to do. Yeah, pretty much. Is that really how it is? Yeah. Because like life's so like you know organized and and set out for you. Every day's planned, and now you can just do anything you want. Yeah. Pretty much, it's not. Yeah, exactly. You on your own time now. Mm-hmm. There's no door opening at a certain time, or you know how you have to do this at a certain time. There's no one telling you what to do, mm-hmm. like shit like that. So yeah, that that becomes a problem too. What have you been doing for fun? Nothing. I've been a uh, fucking uh, nothing studio. I mean, I studio? guess the studio is fun. Now. Is there a particular song that you're like super stoked about releasing that you've Kind of record it since you got out of jail. Um, let's see. Is it all of them? <laughs> all of them because I wrote all of them in jail. So yeah. I, I, you know, I wrote all these songs picturing what my life would be like when I got out of jail, and that's exactly what it's like now. It's kind of crazy. Like I predicted these type of things. Like, you know, I wrote these songs like talking about all this shit. Like. But that's because people told me this how how it was gonna be. But I'm like, man, I don't know how it's gonna be, bro. I've mm-hmm. been here three years. I don't even know if I'm gonna still be relevant, like shit like that. Mm-hmm. And I got out of jail, and it was exactly what I wrote about. It was exactly what people told me it was gonna be, like, you know. Besides, and what's it like, you know, in general? Like, what, what did those lyrics say that you're talking about? Nothing. Just, just getting back to the lifestyle. How mm-hmm. I never go back. Basically, like. And these raps, I still had the mentality because I still do the same, have the same mentality at a certain extent. Like, I'm not finna let nothing happen to me. It's protect myself at all costs. Mm-hmm. And basically, just the same shit. I didn't want to get out of jail and be like, oh no, fucking Malcolm X shit and all shit like that. People don't want to hear that shit. You can do that shit, but like, no one wants to hear that shit. No rap preaching all day and shit. It's certain, it's a certain crowd for that. Yeah. But that crowd is not as big as the crowd that wants to hear the other shit. Like, mm-hmm. that's what makes, you know, that's what it was built on. Shit like that. So, in your narrative, in your eyes, like, what is the main message of, of the story of your, you know, basically false imprisonment? Basically, like, you know, if you have, like, a platform or something, like, because I, I, I try to tell people all the time, like, just watch what you say, man. Like, just watch what you say. Watch who you hang around with. Uh, know that there are hip hop holies, whether they don't feel like they are or not, because they're the hip hop holies. Mm-hmm. There's regular police, and then there's hip hop, and then there's hip hop hip hop holies that literally sit there and watch people Instagrams and want to get people caught up and know where your location, know where you're gonna be, like it's shit like that. Because people, some people don't think that it's real. It is real. How do you feel about uh, DJ Academics? He's might be the police. Uh, uh, I I can't respect that shit he did. Wasn't he like fucking with six nine or something? Like I just yeah. yeah, bro, I can't respect that shit. 
Because at the end of the day, 6 9 was like, he wasn't no, like in my situation, I didn't do nothing. I was at the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. His situation, he was doing shit. Like, he was going all this shit, whatever they was alleging, committing crimes, ordering hits on people, all this shit. And then you decide that you want to tell all of a sudden, you want to tell on the same people that you was hanging around with because they were fucking your bitch or whatever that you're saying, <laughs> bro. Like, come on, bro. That sounds like every reason why every other nigga tells. I want to get home to my bitch. I'm worried about who she fucking like, where shit like that, bro. So I can't respect no shit like that. Like, you wasn't in the wrong place at the wrong time. You wasn't in a situation to where, like, it was, like, come on, bro. Like, you you played a part in this, bro. Like, you did a lot of shit, right? You like you go out provoking people. My situation is different though, but he literally like provokes people and then has the police with him. Like, it's just weird, like, bro. I don't, I can't respect no shit like that. And he's hanging with this nigga, like. Yeah. Just buddy, buddy. Like, it's weird. What about, like, DJ Vlad? I don't know. I just did an interview with Vlad. Oh, really? He didn't ask me no police <laughs> shit, so I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I heard people say that, like, but he didn't ask me nothing. He was straight. Like, he didn't ask me. And I I, I give Vlad that. Mm -hmm. He want, They wanted him to do an interview with me while I was in jail, but he said no, because he didn't want them to use it in my case or no shit like that. So I give it to them. If he was a fucked up person like that, he would have still did the interview. So, yeah. Yeah. So I, I guess looking back on yourself before you went to jail and all that, if you could change one thing about your past, what would it be? Nothing. Wouldn't change nothing. That's what got me here right now. Everything I've been through. And if I changed one little thing, that would change the future drastically. So nothing. I wouldn't change nothing. Mm -hmm. Can we expect to see some more music soon? What's going For on? For sure. I'm going to drop a take next week. I mean, I'm drop done with it. Tape. What's it going to be called? Uh, we Know the Truth. What's the truth? <laughs> The truth, everything I've been through. Yeah. I mean, they seen the truth, so they know yeah. it. They seen what's going on. Yeah. It's really a trilogy mixtape. It's We Know the Truth, mm -hmm. The Truth Hurts, and Ain't That the Truth. But yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Sick. <laughs> yeah. You got some new jewelry? Oh, yeah, for sure. Which one are you most excited about? This one. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that's Mr. Whiskers right there. Who's Mr. Whiskers? Oh, no. Just, I just named him that. Mm -hmm. That's a little lucky cat. It's supposed to be like good business or something. Mm -hmm. You like cats? No, but I like this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you got the logo. I put the, the, the fucking, this is my stink team logo. It's my label logo. So I put the Buddha with the money bag holding the cat because, you know, good Buddha is supposed to be good luck. Yeah, there's definitely a cat theme going on. Yeah, and then it's <laughs> supposed to be like, you know, good business. So I just put it together. That's my yeah. label. So if that makes sense. For sure, I may lean right here. How much uh, did that, how much did this cost? Um, this one was fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. This was ten. This is twenty five. What? Yeah, this was. Um, Damn, dude. This is. I gotta get another one though. I'm waiting for him. So these ones is like like twenty seventeen or something. And then this one was twenty two, and then this one was twenty thousand. I don't know, and this is twenty five, and the brace is probably like six thousand. Mm -hmm. This is like forty or something like that. Mm -hmm. This was twenty. Uh, this, this, is, this is fifteen. <laughs> These pants were fifteen. Uh, got one hundred twenty five on my body right now. Oh, that's cool. I mean, then I don't know. Your outfit is ten thousand times more expensive than mine. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm trying to get this shit out of my fucking pocket. I guess. What? Yeah. Damn! Oh, guess, uh, you brought me this as a gift? Uh, no, this is this is my <laughs> gift for being in jail all this goddamn years. Damn! Yeah. You want to lay it out so we can see it? Oh uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, Damn! How much? It's like thirty, How much is this? like thirty and some change, like thirty-two, thirty-three. Thirty-three. Yeah, something like that. Thousand dollars. Yeah. Damn! What are you gonna spend this on? I don't know. That's the problem. Like. Every time I spend it, it just like keeps going up by like everything I do. So I don't know. I've been trying to figure it out. You gotta buy some cool shit, man. Yeah, I know. I've been buying clothes and shit, and every time I go out of clothes, somebody just comes to give you some money for a feature. They give you some money oh, to model their clothes. So it's like, yeah, I'm trying to spend it. I don't know what to spend it on. I'm trying to get another car though. So I what kind know. of car are you gonna get? I don't know. I want like a Rolls Royce, like a, uh, the Cullinan or something. But they got a Maybach truck too, so I want for one of sure. those. You should buy an RV. Yeah, I'm thinking you, you, you I'd probably can do roll around together. Yeah, I do that. <laughs> I gotta get a sprinter though, for sure. I gotta get a sprinter. Just... Where do you, where do you want to travel to when you get that sprinter? I don't know. I just need it for like when they start tours and shit again. Oh shit! Is touring fun? 
Yeah, I mean, shit, from what I heard, it's fun. I ain't been on tour yet. Oh, shit. In your whole life? I haven't been on tour. Damn. I was supposed to go on tour when I came to jail, but some bullshit happened. You should go on tour with Shoreline Mafia. Yeah, I go on tour with them, but they're not... I guess I, it would be OGZ, I guess, because uh, they're broke up. So. Oh, really? Yeah. I heard about that. Yeah. I just heard the, I heard some crazy tour stories because we have some friends who like go on tour with them. Oh, yeah. They're just telling me some insane shit. That's my boy. I mean, I don't know what <laughs> happened. Maybe I could bring him back. I don't know what they got going on, though. Damn, so I'm really just looking at $33,000. Yeah. Damn. Don't worry, man. It'll be more than that. <laughs> How much for a feature? Uh, Right now? I've been showing love. Like, see, look, my managers and them don't want me to do it. But I've been telling, I've been getting them 10000 all right? My manager's been telling me, no, you're way too big. Mm -hmm. Look at your story. You're going to be this, do this. I'm like, mm -hmm. all right, whatever. They're like, you need to charge people 30. So I'm going to just stick with 10. I'm trying to keep it. I'm not trying to be too Hollywood right now. I'm yeah. trying to keep it like. $10,000? Yeah, but then everybody got that EDD money and shit. So, you know. What's EDD money? All that shit. You know, the scammers and shit. Yeah. Yeah, the EDD. <laughs> unemployment money. So they're like, you over here giving people deals and motherfuckers out here got all this money. I'm mm -hmm. like, I know, bro, but I'm trying to, you know, I'm not trying to be Hollywood, but I, that's what I got to do to stay out the hood. So maybe I need to start being Hollywood. You take Venmo? I don't even know. Oh, oh that's the thing? The little app thing? Yeah. Yeah, shit. If I if I figure out how to work that shit, I'm still trying to figure out how to work all this shit. I can try to help you figure it out. Yeah, yeah I need to figure it out. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming on Break Check, man. Oh yeah, man. Did you right have fun? Now. Yeah, it was cool. Hell yeah, cool. Hope to see you again, man. Yeah, yeah. And I definitely hope you don't go back to jail. I'm not trying to go back. <laughs> Never. <laughs>